First of all, for personal reasons, I have to say, it's, it's, uh, I'm very happy to, back, to be back here in Tallinn. Um, I had a pleasure for many years to work for a company that had operations here in, in Estonia. And we had the best office in all our places here because it was actually on the beach. It was on the beach on pillars, and that's still the best office I ever had in my life. So for some reason, we had all our regional meetings here in Tallinn. And it's sort of interesting because I started coming here 15, 20 years ago. And the change this country has gone through during that period of time is staggering and amazing. And it also shows that if you use something like the internet or using this technology, it can really make a change very, very fast. And I applaud what is done in this country using this technology. Thank you. I also like the city in itself. Anyway, I've been listening to a lot of your conversations over the last couple of days, and I have to say that I'm really impressed with the quality of the discussions. To some extent, maybe they have been very timely, because over the last couple of weeks and months, a lot of questions have been raised about internet and the use of internet and the bad influence of internet. And that discussion has its place. I think it's important. But representing ICANN, we should also remember that despite what many people think, internet is not, is not a natural resource. It's a set of technologies working together and different partners. We and I can work very closely with our partners. Yes, please sit down. Thank you. We work very closely with our partners in the parameters, the protocols, and the number space. And that cooperation actually builds on the basis of what we call internet. Remember, it's only 25 years ago, and I know that ISOC is celebrating the birth of internet 25 years ago, um, in, I think it's September or something, in California. That happened to be the same year as my daughter was born. So when my daughter, first daughter was born, I couldn't post it online. I actually had to use a telephone. And that telephone was actually fixed to a wall. Anyone here remember that time? Half of you were probably not born. Yeah, my staff raises their hands. And it's kind of interesting that I have to explain to my other kids, when I was young, I had to stand at the wall talking to someone because I was connected. And if you called someone, your first question was, who is it? Now the question is, where are you? In a very short period of time, everything has changed. A lot of discussions that has been around here is about content. It's about how to utilize content better and all the challenges it produces. I'm also here to talk about, don't forget it is a technology. Because the interconnectivity of internet, this is what makes four billion users using the same system, is built on parameters that is set and fixed. It is a box. And I've seen that some of the discussions here has been about capacity building in that sense, that I think that we collectively have a role right now to explain that some of the good causes that are discussed about the threats of internet, we actually have to go up and tell our internet actually works technology-wise. Because if we don't do that, there is a potential that for good intentions, people will do legislations or other initiatives that will take away the interoperability of internet which will actually decreate what we call the open internet going forward. We reached a point where internet is not only something which was started 25 years ago as an educational program. It was people working together in the universities around the world that really created internet. That the internet today is something that actually connects people on so many different layers. A lot of the decisions we are making today, we do that with the help of internet. Anything from our love life, how we do education, how we do our banking. A lot of those things that we did in analog before, we now do on internet. And that's kind of amazing. It's also the reasons why we have a multi-stakeholder model in ICANN. Because your internet might be different from my internet, and we need to make sure that everybody comes on board and have their say how we build the next generation internet. This is not only governments. Government actually, in democratic countries, only takes a fraction of this. 
So the multi-stakeholder model makes it possible to engage in this fora and other fora in such a way that your views and ambitions can be taken into account. But going back, it is the technology. And ICANN is about technology. We have a very limited set of things we do. We are not the internet, but we are an essential part of what you call the internet. The main name system, and together with our partners for the IANA functions, we actually control and some of the identifiers and secure the stability of what they call the internet. That is the set we have to protect for the interoperability. And I ask you all to engage in that discussion as well. The policy discussions about what happens on top of internet will always be important, but just to make sure that we don't forget the underlying functionality. And it's actually, to your point, a lot of discussion here has been about it. I had the pleasure of having some of my members from my team who works with what we call the OCTA, the, um, the office of the CTO. We love acronyms in this soup who's been sharing, sharing how we actually works with the stability of the internet in practice. And one of the things we're doing, and I have to say this in all my speeches, is a small thing we do in October 11. Does anyone here miss what's happened on October 11? Or let's we do it the other way around. How many people know what we're doing October 11? Yeah, the people I spoke to today, apparently. <laughs> Okay, so a basic theory about this. One of the things we do is to make sure that you write in a domain name, a URL, you come to a web page. One way of making secure that you actually end up at the right web page is something we call DNSSEC. That's a security system to make sure that you don't end up in a fraudulent web page. I think it's about 25, 30% of all uh, ISPs in the world is using this system, and the rest one maybe you should avoid. This is a part of security stability. October 11, we're updating the password for this system. And that's good to know. Because your ISP has to prepare that. If your ISP hasn't prepared that, you will basically not reach websites on the internet. We, of course, foresee no problems at all. This is going to be very smoothly. That's why we keep talking about it all the time. So, it's nothing you do as end users, but if there's any representative of ISPs here and you didn't know about this, you're going to get a letter from us or the regulator because that's the way we're doing it. Very important. Right now, a lot of discussions about the internet seems to be negative. We talk a lot about the threats, we talk about illegal content, we talk about some of those things we see that we don't like, morally or ethically or culturally. I think it's also important to, and that is an important discussion to have, but it's very problem-oriented. And we shouldn't forget the good things. Many of my staff and people who are engaged in ICANN is doing this for a simple reason. We believe in the power of internet. We believe in this thing that when you actually connect people, something magical happens. And this system now connecting four billion people around the world is a unique system to connect people and when you connect, you can share. And when you share, it grows. That is the underlying reasons why I'm doing this personally. A lot of the people working to me and are engaged in ICANN. And we should never forget in all these problematic discussions that we have that internet makes a difference and you can make a difference on internet. And it's actually very positive. Yes, there are important discussions to have, but please help me of adding in and blending in the positive things. Everything you can do that you couldn't do, like posting pictures of my child on Facebook when she was born. Actually, when I got my third and last child, I couldn't post it because Facebook didn't exist then. Internet is not done. We have, with 4 billion users, and according to the UN development goals, it's going to be, if I understand it correctly, they have a goal to make sure that 1.5 billion users is going to be connected until 2023 or something. Those people will be different from the ones who are connected now. Actually, we could say that the people who are connected now have been the easy one. They've been the elite, the people living in cities, in societies, who can afford to develop internet. The next generation will come much more from 
the outskirts um, in the rural areas in South America, in Asia, in Africa, in countries with huge populations like China and India. They will be preferably mobile because that's the access form they will have. They will not have the same context of internet as we have today. And internet is a fantastic thing because it's both global and local. Yes, you can go online and go around the world, but if you look at traffic, you will actually see that most of the traffic goes inside your country. So now we're entering a space where local languages and local scripts is becoming much more important. It's something that's going to be essential for us developing the next generation of internet users. And we want more internet users on the system because we want to have it bigger. And I think everybody needs to engage in this one. We need a diversity to understand the local needs of internet going forward. And I need your help on that. And I ask you humbly to engage in ICANN and in other formats with a thought in mind, not only about the users here in this room, but also the users who doesn't have the same concept as we have. Religious, cultural, ethnic, or anyone else. That's going to be the next more important users. And we have to fulfill this obligation to us and to the next generation. And one thing more as a finish of this one. We've never done this before. I'm often meeting people who ask me, why did you do that? How did you end up there? And the simple truth is that we are facing challenges together that no one in mankind ever be challenged before. Because some of the things we see here, because of the internet is a very young technology, we don't know the answer. And sometimes we have made mistakes. But we have to work together to actually try to figure out how to do this better. So we need people to engage so we can avoid the mistakes we've done and do new mistakes instead. No one has created internet before. No one has created anything like the multi-stakeholder model before. No one has created anything like this event before. We're actually doing something for the first time. And I happen to think when you look back in 25, 50 years time on this particular period of, in, in time, that they're gonna look at this and see a really big revolution where we were able to together to create something that is so unique as we call the internet. But we're not done. It's not a national resource. It's something that has to be mended, fixed, and developed all the time. And I'm hoping that we can do that together. Thank you very much.